welcome everyone today i'm gonna be showing you the different steel sections we use in construction and what we use them for all right you see apart from using steel as reinforcement for concrete it can also be used as beams or columns in steel frames and trusses it can also be used for grill works like your window grill works and any kind of grill works oh uh -huh. and the common steel section that are widely used are the i section we have the t section there is c section we have the angle section also the square section the round section corrugated section and finally the z section you know steel is so wonderful that you can just blend it into a particular shape and size you need it so that you can suit your um your purpose the purpose you need it for and believe me this is regardless of the method of production you use this is regardless so when I say method of production, I mean the process at which you produce your steel section. And this can be three. It can either one of it can be either one of the three. It can be all rolling production method. It can be cold rolling production method, and it can be the fabrication method. So you see the all rolling production method. This is when you pass a billet or a slab of steel into a furnace in order to eat it, and then you eat it at a very high temperature. And then you cool and finish it into a desired shape or section. And here, the the section we produce is I section. You can produce it into any kind of section, but here is just I section. All right. Okay. So the other method is the cold rolling production method. And for the cold rolling production method, you just need uh, a steel that has been all rolled. Then this ultra rolled steel, you you will now re you re roll it, you re roll it when it is cold, by passing it into a rolling mill. Then you temper or you anneal it, then you flatten and you finish it well into a particular shape or a particular section. So here we have a C section, and then here as well there is section and the third production method is the fabrication steel section so here you just have to assemble different steel sections together and then you finish it you assemble it together you can weld them in order to make a connection between them for example if you want to make an eye section you just need to get three rectangular section you assemble them and weld them in together so that's fabrication production method so regardless of the method or the process at which you produce your section a steel section is still a steel section right so here is an angle section you see an angle section is a section with two legs you can see two legs and they are meeting at 90 degrees to form a hell shape and this section is widely used for roof trusses it can be used for steel frames and it can be used for filler joist as you know one of the advantages of concrete is its fire resistance and this fire resistance depends on the condition of exposure and the nominal cover given to the reinforcing steel. So in order to improve or to increase the fire resistance of your concrete floor, you can just make a filler joist around it with an angle bar. In short, you can produce an angle bar to, to make a filler joist around your uh, concrete floor in order to increase its fireproof. So that is what a filler joist is used for in the floor. Obviously, this is an angle section, but you know what? You can fabricate this angle section to form a T section. So let me copy this. Okay, so let's rotate it as well. So if you look at this now, it is now a T section. All right, it is now a T section, meaning you can weld two angle section together to form a T section. And this method of production is called a fabrication method. Obviously, I did not rule any still here i just watch them together i assemble them together to form a new section so this is a fabrication method of production and the next one is the, is the channel section this channel section is also called a c section or you call it a u section 
it consists of two equal flanges that is this and this and are connected to one web at both end of the web this section is widely used in steel frames as beams or as columns and likewise it can be used for roof trusses and the third section is the eye section this eye section consists of two flanges and one web they are connected together to form uh, I, a letter I. This section has several other names which include steel beam. They call it steel beam. You can also call it steel joist. You can call it wide flange beam. You can call it universal beam. You can call it um, universal column. And then likewise, you can call it uh, edge channel. The yeah, edge channel. So it all depends on whatever form you're using it if you're using it as a column you can call it a universal column if you're using it as a beam you can call it a universal beam if you're using it for joist you know joist means um rib rib when you have a waffle slab then you want to use a joist then you can call it a joist beam or oh, and then it depends on whatever function you use it for so you give its name according to what you use it for so it is the most common steel section used in construction and it is used for lintel, you use it for lintel beams, you can also use it for columns and other kind of beams in frame structures. It's as well used for rafter in roof trusses. They commonly use it for rafter. And the next section here is the Z section. Obviously, you can see it has a Z shape. It has a Z shape, like letter Z. So this section is usually used as pollings in roof trusses. They use it for pollen. So if you look at the bottom, this bottom is so flat and that gives it an avenue to sit properly on the rafter and as well at the top this top as well it gives it an opportunity to connect properly to the roofing sheet so that is an advantage that is the the reason why we use z section for pollen so let me show you a proper illustration so that you can get it well here is a proper illustration that depicts a roof truss you see everything you see in red color here is the rafter all this in black color is the pollen and in between there are, there are small rods in pink color that is called the tension rod or you call it the anti sag rod all right so look at this pollen this rafter let's take the rafter first this rafter is raised at a particular angle here yeah, i raised it at 18 degrees and this pollen is transversely laid over the rafter and in between the rafter you can see the rafter are then connected by some rods that is the tension rod we connect the rafter by some tension rods so if you look at this rafter one and this rafter two it is connected by this tension rod if you look at this um pollen two and pollen three it is connected by this tension rod if you look at this pollen four and pollen five it is connected by this rod all right this anti sag rod is used when the angle of the rafter is over 10 degrees and as i said earlier the angle i use is 18 degrees so the belief is that even though we've permanently connected the pollen to the rafter by welding or by bolt and knot connection the pollen can still fall over due to the steepness of the angle you understand you can see the angle is steep it's steep here yeah. So, because it's still, this pollen, we still believe that it can fall over. So, in order to stop that, we want to connect them together by another form of connection. Even though we've connected it to the rafter by welding, we still want to connect the pollens together by another rod called the tension rod. So, this tension rod, we hold it in place and not to cause uh, a falling. So, that's why we have a tension rod over there. And the section I used for the rafter is the eye section and the section for the pollen is Z section and for the tension rod that's a round section and next is the square bar this is a square bar you can see the shape this section it has a square section and this is an hollow square bar this can be also used for pollens if you want it it can be used for pollens but majorly they are used for grill works yeah, it's for grill works like your window grill works 
your gates grey works and all form of grey works majorly we use them for grey works and here is another kind of section this is called the corrugated steel section you see originally they have no corrugation but they are passed through a machine which then bends them into the desired shape and dimension and generally we use them for roof covering we use them for roof covering they, they are used as roofing sheets here the corrugation has uh, a trapezoidal shape other forms of corrugation can be tri um, triangular some can be um, rectangular some can be squared so we just call them corrugation however there are other steel sections but these are the most common and the most useful we use in building and construction thanks for watching my video up to the end please if you like the video don't hesitate to like and subscribe to my youtube channel and if there's any sort of question you need to ask me you can put it in the comment box i will be in the comment section after this video to put a response to them and i'll do it beautifully and after subscribing there is a red bell icon over there just click it so that i can get a notification whenever i post a new video thank you